What's up y'all, you're watching Vec, and welcome to our guide on how to improve your driving in racing games like Forza and other sims and simcades. If you find yourself struggling in any aspect of these games or just looking to find new ways to improve and reach new heights, this guide will help you get there. While the focus of this guide is on Forza, these tips will extend to other similar games where they apply. The vast majority of sims and sim kids like the Forza series of games or even others like Assetto Corsa or Project Cars will have aspects where you can apply these tips. So listen up, here are 5 tips to improve your driving in Forza and other racing games. Tune your car. This one might sound simple, tune up a car, make it better, but I don't mean just slap on some parts and upgrade the class, no no no. Properly tuning a car can make more of a difference than upgrading the performance alone. In fact, some cars are much better in lower classes than over upgrading them with performance parts can ever do. You don't have to tune the car yourself or even do the upgrades. Finding a proper tune in the fine tune screen should be plenty to get a car properly set up. Other games like a set of Corsa or Project Cars also let you copy tunes. Even if the car isn't taken to new heights like taking a B class into S2, the car will perform much much better in a proper class setup. Over upgrading can ruin the dynamics of the car and it will fall short against other cars that are better suited for the class. So find a popular high rated tune to do the work for you or find a tuning guide to help you out to tune a car of your choice. Either way, a good tune will make a large difference. Drive the car stop. Yep, yep, already going the opposite of the first point, but hear me out on this one. Getting a feel for a car stop will familiarize you with the subtle dynamics of the car. The little things that make the car unique to itself. Give it a few laps or drive it around for a while and see how it performs. Some cars are great stock and just need a small tweak to become amazing. Others need more help to bring it to life. You won't know which unless you give the car a good drive stock. After a while of driving several cars this way, you'll begin to understand the characters of certain cars and classes. When you do choose to either tune a car yourself or download a tune, you'll make better decisions and know what to look for to get the most out of the car. Assists Here's where tons of people feel the strongest about their opinions, and where many will give you the most flack if you don't use what is the most agreed upon assist setup. And that is all off, no assists. However, ignore these people. I'll take the grief for what I'm about to say so you can get better at driving and eventually need no assists if that is your goal. The universal agreement is to use no assists because the belief is that it somehow takes away from the experience or adds nothing to the gameplay or that assists don't make you any faster. But this is a start at the top mentality that leaves less experienced players having to fight a steep uphill battle just to stay and compete at the top and already have to race at a disadvantage against other players who are already experienced enough to play with no assists often ruining the fresh player experience and you miss out on the natural progression of learning and getting better yourself. If you want to start with zero assists, go ahead. I'm not saying don't start like this. But unless you have a lot of experience playing with no assists and already great at racing games, it may not be a good starting place. Now what are assists? These are things like traction control, stability control found in some games, ABS, also known as anti-lock brakes, but it can also be the choice between choosing an automatic, a manual, or even a manual with clutch transmission. Using assist even at the lowest settings can help people that have trouble controlling the car at high speeds, are yet to familiarize themselves with the controls of the car or the game itself. Or maybe you're new to racing games like Sims or Simcades that demand much more out of the player than arcade racers do. Use assists as needed and little by little as you feel yourself getting better, start tuning them down or even off. Eventually you won't need them as much, if at all. But remember, it's okay to use them, even if it's just ABS or automatic transmission, regardless of what the broadly held belief is. The only assists I will say to never use are driving and braking assist. These are separate from the previously mentioned assists and are not found on too many games. However, these don't help and tend to drive the car for you in erratic and unpredictable ways that don't let you learn the game and ultimately lessening the experience. So these are the only two I would say to never use, unless there's an extraneous circumstance where it's the only way you can play the game. Which brings us to progressive difficulty. Ah yes, difficulty. The largest defining factor on how successful a player will be in the game, to an extent. 
Most games have three settings, easy, medium, and hard. But other games like Forza have several which can include highly skilled, expert, pro, and unbeatable. While in Forza, to get all the goodies and seasonal championships, you need to set the difficulty to highly skilled. There is no shame in starting lower. Unlike most games, Forza has a progressive difficulty, meaning that the game will tell you when you're winning too much in your set difficulty and will ask you if you want to increase it for higher rewards. This can make a great complement to using assist as you can progress through the difficulty levels with assist, start tuning them down bit by bit or off, set the difficulty down a notch or two, or even more, and progress again through the difficulty levels. This will give you not only a great path to self-improvement, but a visual one as well. Having a visual representation of improvement will do wonders for your confidence and will help you reach new heights. Speaking of which, challenge yourself. You have to challenge yourself. Don't let yourself stagnate and get comfortable with where you are. You can always improve, even if the results aren't immediately noticeable. These don't have to be large challenges like going from all assists on to off or going from easy to hard, not at all. Small challenges like accepting the increase in difficulty when prompted or reattempting a previous challenge you have failed or even trying something new like drifting if you haven't yet can help you get better in other aspects of the game. Other challenges can be trying to rank up in online or just trying something that you've actively avoided in the past like rivals or for some, the trial. Either way, keep challenging yourself in different ways, big or small, and don't let yourself get comfortable where you are, even if you feel like you don't have the time to do so. If time is a factor, do small challenges. If you find yourself with more time to enjoy the game, then go for bigger and bigger challenges. Don't cherry pick just one or two of these tips, do them all. To varying degrees if you have to, but do them all. And bit by bit, you will find yourself getting so much better than you ever were before. Thank you so much for watching. For more tips, guides, and more, make sure to subscribe to the channel. There is new content every week. Like the video to let me know you like what you saw and leave any questions or comments below. Also, I don't mention this on videos enough, but follow me on Twitter as I will be posting news and upcoming content there more frequently. And it's a more direct way to ask me any questions you may have related to the content or the channel or stop by just to say hello. Take care of yourselves and each other and as always, have a good one.